It, it can be straight Vulcan, <laughs> and but here, here's the catch. Yes, yeah, so you're going to get a new Half Life. We're just spitballing, having fun here. It will only support controllers. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vince Stone here in beautiful downtown Athens, Georgia, switching the bits, doing the nightmare fuel, all in our Linux powered studio, joined every week by one Jordan Swang and one Pedro Mateus. And you at home, Hello. watching us live on Twitch, Shat Realm Dynamic. Let's see if I got everything this week. Do I have the button? I got the button. I got that. Cocaine. Cocaine. Look, 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 look at that. that. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> it's two spoon. <laughs> it's two spoon. <laughs> two spoon. Yes. What's two spoon? Well, there is no spoon. Always a spoon, man. Didn't you watch The Matrix? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there, there's only a spoon in those other movies that never happened. You got to think about that. Think about that. Like the first time, if you're old enough to have like seen the CGI in The Matrix, even the spoon, it was like, oh man, that's so good. It, we peaked. We've peaked as a civilization. And you see the spoon now and you're like, man, I can make that spoon in Blender. I can just spend the spoon. <laughs> you can go to a website and make a spoon. <laughs> Make a spoiler is Pedro. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what's new? Um, I talked about this uh, before we went live. I um, played around with some like really old audio equipment. One piece is something I want to do a video on later on because it turns out it's a really good piece of audio equipment. And fortunately, YouTubers don't know about it. So it is still available. Um, maybe we'll be uh, doing a video on that a little bit later. And um yeah, I, I was kind of shocked this afternoon, just out of curiosity. I went ahead and I, I just looked around. I'm like, because uh, we use a very old, um, like two, well, it depends on how you look at it. We use a PCI sound card. It's not really a sound card. It's a format converter in Jackbox for all of this audio in the studio. And it was originally released in 2003, yet you can buy one brand new in 2021. And they're like, we still make them, but they've made PCIe versions of that. And then they made one called Pro. Then they've just army disappeared all of the uh, PCIe versions, which really upset me because those were compatible with Linux, but the Pro versions weren't, which also made me grumpy at army. But army has continued their 20 plus years of being cool and like giving people the right data bits, you know, like under NDA so they could get things in where it's not a reverse engineering job and then get all the things put together for the um, AIO Pro Driver, which is now available for Linux for anybody out there who's like, oh man, that's awesome because I bought this $1,000 audio interface and I wasn't sure it was going to work with Linux. Ah, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Now, a little bit of housekeeping. We have a new YouTube channel. Ooh. <laughs> Look at <laughs> The algorithm. Are we doing the YouTube thing? We have a secondary channel? <gasps> It, I talked about this on Wednesday, man, because I, it, oh, I, I'm terrified to do anything with YouTube. Not because I'm like, oh, it scares me. It's just like how my accounts have been tied together because Google with G plus and YouTube and having a billion accounts because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I did get one set up for Linux game stream live, live streams. Here we go. Because we do the uncut series, which, you know, continues to go out next day if you're a patron of if it's this show or if it's weekly, daily Wednesdays, we make a little podcast out of that and we give you the live stream in the video version the next day or the same day in weekly, daily Wednesdays. But traditionally I was able to, you know, like a week later, just put it up on the regular YouTube channel. And I've been trying to feed that algorithm and poke it and doing little experiments. And I did that last week, well, last month, I should say. And just by releasing the produced stuff on Linux Gamecast, you know, this show, weekly, daily Wednesdays, you know, interfacing Linuxes and, you know, stuff that's been through the machine. And the algorithm's like, I like that. Qu you know, quit releasing those game videos, you silly people. Which <laughs> Praise be to the Omnisaya. Yeah, pretty yep. much, man. And the AI has rewarded us with, you know, between 20 and 60% increase in viewership, which could just be the stream deck. Who knows? But maybe, maybe this is it. Linux Gamecast uncut. You can get it and it'll have all the latest and greatest from our Twitch live streams and Linux Gamecast weekly. 
and weekly daily Wednesdays. And anytime, you know, we're just going to stream something and just kind of post it, it will be there. And if you're wondering how to find it, you can just go to our Linux Gamecast YouTube page and go to channels. And there it is. And you can be subscriber number 16 if you act now for the low, low price of clicking the button. <laughs> what, are, are you telling the people to like, comment, and subscribe then? I thought we were about It's this. useless. Our people don't, man. Like, I, I, <laughs> no. I'm impressed by like, because it, it shows you on the comments when you logged into the YouTube studio, like who's Whether a subscriber. Not, yeah. yeah. And like people have like are straight up always on comments. And like, you, you've been watching the show for like eight years and you have... Not 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 gonna tap that subscribe button. Okay. Well, I, I mean that's the thing. As, as long as the YouTube video shows up in my front page when I click refresh. Yeah, right. Like what the, what's the need? <laughs> what's the point? I haven't lost any sleep over it, but I thought that was kind of fun. And uh, yeah, you've been uh, doing the interviews, though, man. Yeah, I've been I've been busy interviewing for new positions. Got no a couple offers positions. on the table. No old positions. No. I mean, I could like that's the thing. I've seen postings for. The two jobs that I've left previous to this still open. So, well, I remember you. You've had the IRL. If you're in the job market long enough, you will have this when you quit, and they just almost double your salary. They're like, "Hey," yep. and you're like, "Oh, we 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 got this new department. We'd like you to head." Uh, <laughs> it's like, uh-huh. like so, now, so, so what you're saying is like, now you're willing to pay me what I'm worth. Mm-hmm. Got it. And this now, whole now, other now, time. Yeah. Or now, now, now you're willing to actually listen to me. Uh huh. Mm. Uh-huh. Okay. I, 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 okay. I see. I see. How, yeah. But like, oh man, as 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 a as as a particularly non-social person, like I feel fucking drained after one of these. Like trying trying to be all tactful and whatnot. I I I literally used up all my tact in an interview, and I said something inadvertently very insensitive to my girlfriend at one point. Oh no. Oh fuck! I used up all my energy trying to be diplomatic in the interview. God damn it. <laughs> um, so, how how yeah. is the? Uh, are, are you getting like good interview questions? Or are you getting the motherfuckers that are paid to sit around, uh, like come up with some bullshit? Oh, I, 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 I've gotten to the point now where when someone gives me a bad interview question, I will just straight up tell them that it's a bad question. Mm-hmm. I'll give them an answer, but I'll just be like, "But yeah, this is an awful question. It's not specific enough. Like you're just at, you're asking for general bullshit. Don't yeah. do that. Ask this, me this is not going to benefit your company. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Pedro, you, Pedro, Mateus. you got a new job. No, <laughs> oh. I got um I got a couple of emails with some offers like oh Jul- we need someone to fill in this role at a very short notice and I email back yes and how much is that paying oh uh way less than I'm currently getting it's like uh, I'm sorry I'm not gonna waste your time or mine <laughs> bye. <laughs> so yeah no it's it, the, the thing now is just finding a place here or that allows me to work remotely that doesn't want me to work for less money than I'm getting right now. That, so, no, but, you, but, but yeah. you see, you, you end up saving money cause you don't have to commute and we can't micromanage and stare over your shoulder all the time. Hey man, middle management has to earn their keep somehow, Jordan. They got, they got to justify their existence, right? <laughs> I mean, we're not getting rid of the horse. <laughs> no, the horse is a mainstay. Now it's been like grandfathered in. It is a stately, venerable institution of Linux Gamecast. It's the Steam Linux Update. That's a big check mark. A big green one. All the check marks, all the places, because hey, man, you got to verify your dick occasionally. You know what? I'm not going to be doing that this time because I fuck you not. 27 hours of YouTube trying to decide whether or not our video was age appropriate or whatever, man, because we said steam dick too many times. <laughs> Guarantee that's what it was chewing on. <laughs> this, this, yeah. This, this, this is the AI's revenge. It's like, ah, you opened up a new channel. Hey, eh? get fucked. No, no, this is before I opened up a new channel. The video version didn't go out officially until Monday, man. So yeah. yeah. Anyway, we need to verify our dicks. Fuck you, YouTube. I do what I want. Um, <laughs> introducing Steam Deck Verified. This is a thing. Here at Valve, we've been... Basically, you're going to get graded. You're going to get graded. Valve is going to say whether or not what you've done is a good idea, bad idea, or a hey, go back video. Verified, playable, unsupported, and unknown. These are your options. Now, keep in mind, 
This is not just for Proton. This is going to show up if you get your Steam Deck and you're playing a Linux native game. And I can think of some Linux native games that are not going to get the green check mark. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot of this is based off of stuff like input methods. You need to be able to fully control everything via controller. There needs to be like minimal keyboard interaction. Uh, native mm-hmm. resolution is another big one. Uh, and yeah, definitely, definitely a lot of games will or and actually the, the big one here that I think is going to kill a lot of what's in the Unity ghetto right now is if it has a launcher, that launcher needs to be compatible with the controller and that Unity scream a nope. No, es bueno. <laughs> And it, that launcher can have um, big warning to say, oh, this um, operating system is not supported or, oh, your GPU is not supported. It's oh, like feral. F- f- feral. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> a, a lot of those games are, get, are getting the exclamation pointe. No, no. You yeah. got to think about All that. of you them are getting that. You really got to think about that on Feral's end because uh, like Warner Brothers and places like that are really going to be looking through that fine print. I'm like, uh, are they going to fix this? Do we got to give them more money? It's, you're going to have to give them some more money. Um, <laughs> oh, ab- ab- absolutely. And, and we, we can we can look forward to another 10 years of Total War expansions. Yeah. You. Uh, so here's the thing. Um now, I, I do think, like, the if, if the Steam Deck really genuinely catches on, like, in a big, massive way, you are 100% going to see studios going, we want to do a native, and they're not thinking Linux native. That's not how they're thinking. They're going to be thinking, we want to do a native port for the Steam Deck mm-hmm. to get the maximum performance out of it and uh, just maximum compatibility because, hey, why not? And, you know, maybe it's not a good experience, uh, just experience with Proton or whatnot. That, I think, is going to be um, like a big bonus soda for the Linux gaming porting industry. Both of them. And um, there's... Yeah, just, Ethan has been pumping the gas on that self-promotion on Twitter, definitely. I mean, he should, because... Yep, <laughs> you got to think about it. I mean, if you're like, fuck, who do I go to? I'm like, right over here, you know, I can get this sorted for you. But yes, it's going to be very interesting times. Now, you have a take on this. I I have not seen any mention from Valve. But, I mean, we are releasing a game console, and you really should have a pack-in title, right? I so I, I mean re, real realistically speaking, they could just like throw the orange box on there, just give TF2 portal uh let the um half life uh, half life two and all all that shit. And that would be a pretty good pack in be like, hey, everyone already owns that, but hey, if you in case you don't. But I would code name like Gordon come on. Anything. Code name Gordon, baby. That free game that's not a you gotta download through the fucking app ID now. <laughs> you need to know the launch codes to get that one. And it doesn't that's the thing. That one doesn't work out of the box with Proton. You actually need to extract the EXE that's inside the EXE. Nope. Because otherwise it doesn't work. Oh no 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 oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Valve is adding pure Vulcan support to it. That's it, it can be straight Vulcan <laughs> and but here, here's the catch. Yes, yeah, so you're gonna get a new half-life. We're just spitballing, having fun here. It will only support controllers. Yep. Period. There's no way around it. It's a Steam Deck exclusive. <laughs> no matter what you do, you got to play it with a controller. So you got to play Half Life with a controller. I'm, uh, um, actually, actually, I'd I'm, give I'm it about a Strider week until Key to too. Joy uh, shows up. <laughs> How are they going to play the Linux native title on Windows? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Run it in VirtualBox. That's what they normally do. <laughs> that's what they did to get the penguin for team fortress too. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm a big fan of the big badge of shame. And this is uh, basically what they're doing. I, it's just that two things disappoint me. Uh, the little prohibited sign for when it doesn't work uh, or it has severe issues isn't red. So they're deliberately backing away from the badge of shame and all of the icons only appear if you're in deck view. So, well, well, so they said they are going to be porting uh, the big picture mode that's coming with deck to the desktop client. So that may be coming soon. Mm. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, but I, it I doesn't show up in the regular desktop client. So it's like, oh, so it's only <sighs> a badge in th- that. That's, yeah. that's because you're not a console peasant. You're you're a discerning PC gamer who's capable of determining Quit whether trying to think with portals. We've been over this, man. Um, <laughs> compatibility. I might need to think with my dick. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, well, I mean, I mean, Val- Valve is trying. They're, they're hiring some testers. Uh, they're going to be building a team to review a bunch of these uh, titles. This come from PC Games and... And yeah, I feel bad for the people who are signing up imagining like, yeah, I'm going to test God of War and Uncharted (laughs) and they get fucking Dragon the Game and fucking Mushroom Warriors and whatever fucking shit is in the unity ghetto. Shrooms, yes, shrooms, that's what it was. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's it's good to see that they're actually trying to put some manpower behind that. I don't know how long the team, like, they're, they're probably going to do, like, a mass hiring of contractors just to, like, get the initial catalog done. But once that's done, I feel that department is probably going to be prime target for downsizing. You have to imagine that there's some level of automation to this, too. I mean, you get a thing, a chunk of it, then it's going to get, like, something's going to fail and it's going to get kicked off to, um, yeah. Like here, go put it in the meat space. But I mean, 50,000 titles on Steam and, uh, Hey Valve, you know, there's a lot of people out there that would, will work for deck. I mean, <laughs> saying, $20, yeah, I get a $20. Deck for free. 20 bucks, 20 bucks. I'm just saying if it, you got my address fam. So <laughs> yeah, no, it's it, it, the whole valve hiring people to curate the Steam store to effectively curate the games for the sake of a handheld gaming console. Hold on. I need to, uh, let's Here's one see. of the things uh, I want to think about. Like, as Valve as a company, I'm completely wholly unfamiliar. I know two people <laughs> that work at Valve, and I know one person that no longer works at Valve. The two people I know at Valve don't know each other. There's that. But here's what I want to know about Valve's hiring process. Are they going to legitimately... Prefer somebody who's just off the street. They're like, hello, this is what a portable gaming console is. Huh. Okay. And (laughs) where are they going to be like, yo, hire some people that are just going to be able to burn into it and like look and catch stuff like out of the box. Do they just want that generic overview or they want somebody to dig into it? I I imagine there's probably going to be a mix of both. They're definitely Mm. going to probably go to like some sort of staff contractor and be like, yo, we just need people to like launch games and like, do you think they have like a pass fail team leader? You could be the dick commander. No, (laughs) that that position is only reserved for the click commander. The big dick. You get cold. Just the tip. (laughs) Yeah. The tip. Yeah. It's the shaft valve. If you're not having fun with the naming of this, just come on, light up a little bit. Client betas. Yes, specifically the October 21st client beta. It has a specific uh, Linux fix, which is the um, X3 uh, X3, uh, root certificate from Let's Encrypt that got forcibly expired. Uh, And, well, a lot of the scout and heavy runtime uh, libraries that dealt with those particular certificates were outdated to say the least because they were no longer supposed to accept those so those have been updated and hopefully any of those issues will be sorted out they've also fixed some more stuff around the shader pre-caching thank you it's it's getting better i'm not getting like 30 games downloading about four megabytes every single day it's only like five so it's progress i suppose I, I, I mean, yeah, I ho- ho- <laughs> hopefully they, they're going to get that sorted by the time the deck rolls out. Like even with the background uh, compilation of shaders, uh, if mm-hmm. you're running the, sw- the Steam Deck in battery mode, that's not going to be fun to just like boot it up and be like, where did my battery go? I had a full charge. Uh, <laughs> I, can't, I, I, I see I, it I, going down. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm a little shocked it took them that long to push out a uh, update to the CA bundle that has the updated Let's Encrypt certs because, you know, you, Valve should not be making people pay for SSL for their game server. But hey, you know what? I'm glad they did it eventually. Mm. I don't, you, ben, you had some problems with the... Uh, uh, yeah, the, this is update? the first time I've ever run into... Uh, you know, I ride that nightly train and... Um, I got the update and I've had some GUI glitches with it. Uh, sometimes when I go to a store page, I just get like a blank page. I'm like, huh. Then just back out and go and it lights back up. And I've noticed like a little bar at the bottom of the client, which I'm like, what, what is this? Will you go away if I full screen? No. Minimize. And other times it just doesn't show up and it's not a problem. So mm. none of these things have prevented me from clicking play buttons. So I'm, I'm not the person. <laughs> yes. Right. I don't spend time <laughs> inside the steam client. Like it, it, it didn't make any errant directories in your home folder, of course. Oh, like gasp. I hope not. 
if I do, I'll send pictures to Pedro. But like, mm, look at that naughty dot file. Well, mm. That's not oh, no. my home folder, so I don't give a shit. I'll send link it. SSHFS. <laughs> I, I don't know. There, 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 there's some pun involving boxes here, but I can't find it. <laughs> oh, big boy boxing. Yes, uh, it is. If you played um, any that old, ah, what was it called? The Mario. Mike Tyson's boxing punch game. Out? Yes, punch out. Uh, the if you played that game back on the SNES or NES, one of them. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, there, there this was will look out, immediately. Yeah, uh, there was a Wii version too, but and there was the the other one with the really fancy graphics. That was a PlayStation one. But yeah, that's besides the point. Big Boy Boxing is um, well, it's not available yet per se, is planned release date as 2022, but the demo is available right now, and the animation on the uh, on display on the trailer, at least, I didn't try the demo, but that animation looks very good, and yes, if you played any of those old games, it will be immediately familiar, because it is, yeah, it, it is just punch out. <laughs> but here, here's, here's my question. Um... You, y- y'all watched that uh, ADG- AGDQ thing where they played Punch Out with like one person controlling each half of the controller and they no, did it purely no, by sound. One, I only watch you see <laughs> peasants. I only watch blindfolded Punch Out at this point. Well, yeah, yeah, this was this was what I'm talking about, like the the multiplayer <laughs> blindfolded Punch Out where each person has one half of the controller. Uh, if you, if you're able to do that with Big Boy Boxing, I will say kudos to you, developers. <laughs> Now, <laughs> to Pedro's point, yeah, I really dig the animation on that. I mean, this looks very slick, very well done. And what Scott said, yes, it was on the VR, the VR boy. Virtual boy. Yeah, yeah remember oh, that? Yeah. <laughs> that was a thing. Fun. No, no, my neck was too bent, so I erased all my memory. I'm, I, I'm thinking back to, like, the original NES. I remember playing Punch-Out, just going through it, and like, oh, this is kind of fun. Thinking that was 30 plus years ago. I don't know how well that formula holds up in 2021. And this looks like it's really sticking to it, man. It's like, mm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. maybe you can play it with a um, like motion controller. So you can like punch holes accidentally and like you flat panel. And maybe, maybe, maybe if you, you get, there's like a VR version, one thing, Oh man, the uh, the the system requirements here are, are a little are a little something. <laughs> little uh, apparently, re- rec- recommended sound card is an Echoplex three twenty two Q System Max LG Base Wave Fire Advanced Sound Gear. Oh, what? And it also apparently needs the Kids Bop <laughs> Sound Operator. Yeah, oh. The Windows ones are. Um, Check out the storage specific. on Brad. <laughs> Evil nine, one nine, it nine. does and stands. Okay, hang on. We, we I, I hate to uh. <laughs> derail the show sound, sound car shame yeah this, this is what i want to see your, your doesn't exist on. doesn't exist oh hang on uh M- mmo 13.ru i wonder what kind of bitcoin <laughs> miner you're running right now uh, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well okay it's just some type of inside joke that i yeah probably i i think i think it's just like why are you looking for a sound card requirement <laughs> Most of the, wave have of, the base sound. wave of fire is interesting. Yes, <laughs> I, I don't understand. I don't. Uh, so, have you ever like wanted to go back and play some PS One games? I mean, all the all the time, but I usually just play the PC ports or I'll run it through. Can, an okay, here's the thing. Um, like N sixty four PS One is just like straight up like vintage at this point, right? Like, yeah, you want to play yeah. some like old shit like your parents were playing. I mean, no, if, yes, if, if you, which if, for a lot of people parents. watching this, well, probably not watching this. <laughs> like, but, what is our de- people what's watching our YouTube videos in like, general? That's yeah. here's here. 20, 25 to fifty. Dude, that's no. our age range. No, no. uh, uh-uh. okay. dude, we 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 just start hitting at uh, sixteen, seventeen, and we end up at mid sixties. That 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 tracks. Yeah. But uh, you you may like the old school Resident Evil style games, complete with tank controls and pre-rendered cutscenes and obscure puzzles that require you to collect every single thing in every inch of every room. Well, Elisa might be for you. Um, you can pick it up for about 16, 15 uh, US. Oh, no. They have a, de- they have a demo, <laughs> but I, I I started it up and it it's just straight up Resident Evil. So if you are looking for more of that, uh, go for it. I will say though, does not work with Steam input uh, for the Dual Shock Four. Dual Shock Four. Eek. Dual Shock Four. 
So, dual sock. <laughs> dual sock. So uh, you're you're gonna have to uh, use your keyboard controls for your tank controls. And yeah, it's it's definitely a thing. It looks the part. Uh, definitely controls like it. Now here's something I gotta so, throw. Do you think there's like a, just a shader that's like PS1 shader? I wouldn't be surprised. Or N64 shader. You'd see a lot more games with that. Uh, the only other game that I can think of that looks very PS1-y uh, is Vaccine. But that one, also available on Linux, by the way. But uh, no, it didn't get very Pedro, well reviewed. We're, we're, we're just ahead of the times. So you got to wait five years. And then the retro PS1 aesthetic is going to be fucking everywhere. Okay. Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I mean, we, we were joking about that like less than three years ago. We're like, oh, just wait. We're going to get uh, hipster pixel polygons. They're coming. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I look we're forward to the cycle H- back HD, to uh, Minecraft. I look forward to the HD version of Marble Fighter. Oh, baby. <laughs> baby. Or Clay, Clay Fighters or whatever the fuck it was. What was that stupid, um, like, overhyped robot fighting game that just immediately tanked? Do you remember? Someone will. Anyway. Let's talk about what Valve has quietly done. Like, shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> because they didn't. They didn't. Uh, Half-Life 2's major secret beta update. Uh, who does this come from? This person on YouTube. I, I'd click your video, man. But it's like, uh, I don't want to get my copyrights. Preparing for the Steam Deck, Half-Life 2 gets increased. Field of view, Vulcan support, and more changes. Tyler McVicker is your guy. Thank you. What's his YouTube channel? I'm going to give him a uh, I, th- I think it's just Tyler McVicker. Okay, search for the Tyler McVicker. Uh, you got to jump into the beta program, and then you got to add the Vulcan flag to your launch options, but... Maybe maybe dash window, too. Uh, you know what? Yes. I didn't have to do that, because <laughs> I like to live a little. And um, hold your breath on that first launch, um, because it, it'll bring you right back to like SDL 1.2 days, because main monitor... Got it. I was like, oh, and these other two just disappear. I'm like, oh, boy. Blink. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> boy. And it, it keeps you in suspense for like three seconds. Like, oh, I received bacon. And that eventually shows up. And I mean, it, it works. But I mean, it, it's not exactly. Okay. Here's how much of a load Half-Life 2. First of all, Half-Life 2, well, is this is like six gigs. Maybe? Yeah, it's small. Yeah. It, it's a rounding it, it came out in 2004. So... <laughs> rounding error and uh because of course i immediately like jumped and downloaded and played with it for just a second um but it, it it doesn't take a lot of uh you know i i have a thread ripper but let's be honest i got a first gen thread ripper which is like two six cores literally glued together so were you thinking first gen ryzen mm-hmm. it didn't close apparently that's the problem with this update it, it was running in the background for i know seven hours and i never noticed it yeah, it, uh, you, you gotta you gotta give it the old uh, kill nine. I I I don't I don't know, pa- Pedro. You and I had uh, similar problems with the with the full screen. Yeah. Yeah, I had to throw it the dash window. Otherwise, the menu it was loaded. You could hear the background sound effects of whatever scene showed up, but it was frozen. Mm. So it's like so- okay, kill that. Start it with dash window. So, so what happened to me was it killed the monitor that the speakers were plugged into. So I didn't even get sound. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, so I had, I had to SSH into it from the, from the oh. laptop over here. Yeah. So, uh, I, my, my guess here is that maybe valve is intending these to run in game scope because that would definitely explain the bonkers full screen situation. That nonsense. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. It's don't, don't, don't even bother with it. You are, you are displaying to this little window right here. Get, get fucked, fucker. Dude. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, do you think you could do like plus window, like plus full screen minus window, like let him fight it out, see who wins? Uh, m- maybe. Set, set like some inco- <laughs> set some impossible resolution op- options, like 1444 by like 20. You see, now I, now, now that I have the uh, Wayland powered <laughs> NVIDIA drivers, I want to open like a little Weston with a little terminal in it and try to launch Steam in a little or one down and open that in a little. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. D- don't you love it when terminal programs are like, your terminal is too small. Please make your window bigger. Get wrecked. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of getting wrecked. Yeah. Coming up next, we're talking more about that Wayland goodness on NVIDIA and Monster. Back from the dead, it's Stadia for Halloween. 
And wouldn't you know it, uh, that, that, that was a lot of deck picks. So now let's get on to some other Sex things. Picks? Yeah, some uh, Linuxy stuff Can we that have some, is. Like hex picks? Maybe some Rex. We may picks. have some Waylon picks. How about, yes. how, ooh, can we get some Chex Mix? I'll fuck up some Chex Mix. <laughs> what, what, what about what about some Tex Mix? Tex Mix. Oh, do you think you can get Tex Mix Chex Mix? Probably, yeah. Probably exists. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it probably would be. All now, right. God damn it! Now I want a burrito, <laughs> Pedro. Go, go, Hunger. Go. Yeah, if, 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 if you want to Uber Eats me a burrito, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Tex Mix. No. <laughs> yeah, Tex-Mex. Um, I mean, you send me some nachos, send me a burrito, send me a chalupa, whatever you want. Uh, head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Become a Patreon. You get cool stuff like access to our Discord channel. Uh, you can listen to the pre-pre-super shows and that extra hour of content. Hour? We, like three hours. Hour. The pre-pre-super shows? In? Oh, no, I wasn't paying any attention. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, not, not, not you. you I, I mean, do. you'll also you'll that's also get full, you'll also get access to the oh, full four, four hour I'm, rock one. But that's, that's coming later. Like, that's my thing, man. I'm sorry, yeah. I wasn't paying attention. What's going on? Doesn't pay attention. <laughs> I am the one who ate <laughs> squirrel. Um, yeah, but uh, get I was distracted. Discord, get I'm access to for our text show notes. Text mix. Get access to whatever Ven is snacking on, whatever canned meat he's perusing. Uh, that, that's what you're going to see on Discord. Ven going grocery shopping, me going grocery shopping and taking pictures of funny stuff. Uh, we got show notes as well. You can get access to at 250 a week, which is pretty cool. You can uh, make story suggestions. If we put something in the show notes that is incorrect, you can say, no, you fucking morons. This is here's Here's our supporting evidence that we will completely ignore. Um, you can even buy your way on. Tell the me you don't want to watch show. that video. <laughs> See, now I'm just, I'm just, I'm just hungry. Food.com, so one hour and ten minutes. <laughs> I, cre- cre- creepy abuelita <laughs> stares into your soul and extracts all the nachos from it. Uh, hey, yeah, everyone, but, check uh, this out. We also got some things that you can put on your body, man, and it's not terribly yeah. frightening. No, no, it's quite tame. Store.linuxemcast.com. We got some hell We got the face-offs. We got the Linux <laughs> Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, the classic, and of course, the Frank. Mark not one, not two, but Mark three. Use me penguin stickers, mugs, you name it. We got chairs. There's always chairs hanging around. But, hey, if you want to buy something for Jordan and make him say something uh, that you want to record that can be highly incriminating, I suggest you head over to LinuxGameCast.com. Hover over the support button. Go down to the uh, wish list things because you'll see things like... What? Grignier and the accordion? <laughs> mm-hmm. this, this, this is what Pedro wants. Apparently he... Yes. Oh, wait. I thought that was a razor. <laughs> Apparently he... Or maybe he's got some extra long nose hairs he's got to tweeze out. He, it's always <laughs> weird. I, what we're doing is creeping on Pedro's list. That looks like sex toys. Uh, but it's not. <laughs> the Noctua fan? Yeah. <laughs> Sexy Noctua fans, man. And dog fishes and stuff like that. Speaking... Let's see what... Uh, let's see. Let's creep on... Uh, Jordan. Don't you already have an Horizon 9? I got or oh, I got a 3900 that the one hey yeah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> that's a 5900 yeah. X. Yeah, I want that one too. I really yeah, want we, that one too. We, we all we all want that resizable bar Pedro, but that's that's spoilers. Yeah. Horizon 9 <laughs> Samsung's oh wait. That that yep. cat sports Olympic bump. Oh, bumper blades. Yeah. Yeah. Muscle massager? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> What, what the f- are you responsible enough to have uh, <laughs> put that in your throat magnets? and try to talk? I, again. I, I am responsible to have a second box of neodymium magnets if that's what you're asking. Oh, okay, you must have some <laughs> punk ass neodymium magnets because the ones I got are like hidden from me because they almost broke my fingers. I'm pretty sure they fractured yep. some bones. Um, we got one for the studio. If you want it up on this wall back here, that's what this is. This is a fine, upstanding cannibal. Stick around for your name in the credits and all that fun stuff, but uh. We got like yeah, little cards you can send in. You can read. Uh, of course, uh, I don't have anything. But I got that. I got that RME interface. It's a thousand dollars. Somebody buy me that. <laughs> uh, I, bunch, don't, I don't have anything terribly interesting. This is all for the studio. There you go. That, um, yeah. Pony. Pony. Uh, okay. Nope. See, can't even get a switch. No. Got, 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 got to play it in the Bayonetta. Yeah. <laughs> can't even get the switch. switches. Or how are switches still out of stock? I guess we're going to buy the, the, you buy the OLED. Well, see, this is what I'm thinking. Uh, man. They've like, been out of stock since the beginning. It's like the out of yep. stock console. Then again, it's uh, it's Nintendo. Nintendo. It's yeah. manufactured I, scarcity city. <laughs> I worked. 
<laughs> I worked at a Costco the year that the Wii came out, and that sh- like it would not stay on the shelves. Like mm. people were just fucking. The Wii it. wasn't like widely available until like like what, three years after it was on, right? Yeah. After they released the Wii U, and oh. people were like, "Oh, right." <laughs> that knocked the taste out of people's mouths. So X Wayland, it is the future, and um, prepare yourselves because Nvidia is getting into it. Oh yeah, it's finally happening. It is. Uh, it is. Well, it's a release candidate for the version twenty one one three for X Wayland, which is the thing, the compatibility layer. Let's call it that. Uh, that allows you to run X applications on Wayland. A lot of old video games run on X specifically, so you need X Wayland for that. And, well, you may remember that uh, NVIDIA was doing EGL streams and everyone else went with GBM, so GBM was the way that X Whalen was going to work for that compatibility. Last week, we talked about the NVIDIA drivers that finally enabled GBM over EGL, because NVIDIA, but now that uh, hack around it, or the way that NVIDIA decided to do it, is uh, going to be present in the up and coming X Wayland version so you can play those old games on X Wayland with the yeah. NVIDIA proprietary and drivers. And Jordan, games. I gotta ask you this, man. Yeah. <laughs> does this mean I'm just gonna be able to be like fuck it? All right. I, I run Wayland now. Uh no, because you use XFCE, so you're gonna be waiting another three hundred years for them to implement. Ah, thank you. Uh, you. Gnome or KDE for that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. But uh <laughs> but I mean like it, it begins that Jeff, right? I feel like Barney Gumbel after taking a sip of beer. The the bizarre post X moon future is almost here, and I can't wait to see what new horseshit arises to ensure another decade of X. It's called uh, pipe wire. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I will I will say, though, uh, does this mean that we're going to be getting a third-party NVIDIA-based Steam Deck-ish console, question mark? Because they're like, oh, we see we see all this progress being made with AMD. We can't let them have a better driver than us. Oh, you know Jensen's just going to be like, fuck it, make one. We're gonna, what do you want to call it? <laughs> you know what we're going to... The, the, the shield. The, the steeled. <laughs> it's, it's like the Steam Deck <laughs> shield, the steeled. <laughs> Pedro's trying I'm to, trying to reach for yeah. the uh, the shield right here. Sorry, upside down. <laughs> it's going to be like Captain that. Captain America throws this mighty shield. It. Yeah, it's going to be tight, man. Yeah, that could work. Powered by AMD. Um. <laughs> A- AMD CPU, NVIDIA GPU on the oh. in, on the NVIDIA console. So, so what what happens if um, Apple releases a fucking M1 powered? handheld thing that is like yeah this thing's got the compute power of a you know metal only so 2060 and yeah it doesn't require yeah. a fan <laughs> it'll run for a month oh it's an um, ipad mm. okay <laughs> yeah Me- metal only i hope you enjoy molten vk because that's what you're gonna be using this is a thing so yeah uh i i looking forward to, you know what at least worst case scenario i'm gonna have the option to play around with the hot new steamy stuff you know Yep, mm-hmm. game scope. Yeah, that's the way I look and at it. And I am curious. I am curious to see what the slap fight's going to look like when something breaks on either side and l- accusations start being leveraged. No, 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 no. See, uh, it was the Wayland developers. No, 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 no. It was NVIDIA who broke it. What do you mean? Hang on. No, no, you say Wayland developers. <laughs> is gonna, it's probably going to be like whatever um, window manager from Wayland you're deciding to use. Oh, no. Rat, rat poison completely breaks <laughs> NVIDIA. <laughs> yeah, un, un, unusable. <laughs> Unusable. I look forward Zero to your shares. awesome WM Wayland version. <laughs> Open so, box, baby. You might remember billions of years ago, um, Google decided it was going to get into video gaming. We're talking like four years ago now. So much that I was beta testing. Uh, Strider, you, you were on it too. We got free copies of Assassin's Creed Odyssey out of it. And... Um, their game streaming service. It was going to be called Stadia. Well, it is currently called Stadia and it still technically exists, but you know, it was playable back then and they kind of made a push a year ago, a little more than a year ago, but then they didn't have anything ready. Didn't nothing exist. And uh, this year they kind of shut down their game studio and um, you know, later on so much people, they're still faithful out there. Um, one of the They're definitely problems. still employed people. One of the, well, the guy who was heading up the division kind of left. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> they shut down a studio. The you guy in think, charge. Um, one of the issues was you couldn't buy a game, you know, 
You just couldn't get it. I mean, you bought it, but it wasn't yours to keep. It wasn't transferable. And what happened when Stadia disappeared? Well, motherfuckers, you're about to find out because Google Stadia salvaged future as a back-end cloud service. It is here. It's a real thing. After the consumer flump, Google wants to license Stadia tech to companies. All right. All right. I look at it like this, man. You know, it didn't work as a centralized service. You know, one all of it in one spot. So it's definitely going to work when every other studio has their own little wall to garden that you got to sign up to for just their games. That'll that makes, it works for Netflix, right? Yeah. And and well, Netflix you used to be cool. Netflix, um, but you know, Valve. How about you like license some of this until you get done with your in-house solution that I absolutely have to assume that you might be working on. Wink. Um, but you know what? The biggest news from this AT and T is uh, the. the They haven't announced it or like publicized it yet, but you can sign up for the AT&T game stream service and they have the goddamn Batman, the goddamn Batman game that Farrell was working on, but was so atrociously get fucked uh, that they pulled it from Steam, even the Windows version. And Farrell was like, all right, I guess we can't even mess with this. And and we're talking about Arkham Knight. There is a Linux build of this game out there, but... Maybe it now lives on in Stadia because they're offering to like, hey, we can do the back end. Here's some tools to get the stuff done and go forth and pretend that the infrastructure exists somehow now more than it did. Yeah, when we tried it, it. In, in in only municipal areas and no rural stuff where people may not have access to consoles or the power mm-hmm. necessary to run shit. I don't know. Like. I, I'm I'm with Ven on this. Like the dream of the unified storefront for this is dead, and that, I think that was like the most successful way Plausible this could go. Way, right. Yeah, I I could maybe see this being a successful value add. So if like uh, Epic or Ubisoft or whatever, they're like, oh well, if you buy this copy of the game on like our service, then you also get access to the Stadia version. I have an idea. We can do a service that'll allow you to stream your existing Steam games. Now, if I can come up with a name for it. Something like now, something with the now, force it. Like a Ra- Geo thing that I got now. for free with yeah. this tablet. Ra- Radeon, Radeon soon. I got it. It's called Radeon soon. Like, uh, yeah, <laughs> what you're just, what GeForce now is doing and like having success with it, you know, mm-hmm. because yeah, yeah, you get to play your own damn games. Indeed. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I see Valve's point of like trying to keep it all home based. So that way you can at least have all your it, it simplifies the game save thing because definitely people developers aren't taking that fucking cloud save box and they fucking should be but mm-hmm. you know oh okay. including Here's developers something. that did for previous games and now the current ones they don't here is a fresh hell um that i want people to be very aware of the i ran into that uh with a game that we're going to be reviewing this week but this was like a very stark thing i should have brought up in the steam segment incompatible saves between the proton version and the linux version Yeesh, yeah. Yo, motherfuckers, I, so, that better be one of the damn check marks on like your Steam <laughs> uh, deck compatible thing because that fucked me this week when an update was released to a game and they forgot about the Linux version and there wasn't, uh, the depot wasn't enabled, so they had to roll that back and I was out of sync unless I wanted to play with Proton and start from the very beginning. So I, I will I will say kudos to, uh, I've, I'm sp- Blanking on the the guys who make the border. Gearbox, oh. Gearbox. Uh, the Borderlands Two uh, Linux saves are completely compatible with the Windows version. I had to switch over to Proton to play with some friends recently because of the the you know they, there's the massive version mismatch ever since Aspire dumped the port. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, you can mm-hmm. just drop your uh, your mm-hmm. Linux saves in your Windows save folder and it picks up right off the bat, which is nice. real nice. Not all yeah. games do that though, Ew. but. <laughs> the, 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 this, uh, this is a bit of an ongoing problem but you know what Vul- it's time to put a fork Z- in Vulcan it's zag? can we zag yes well uh, not so much a fork but let's uh, let's build an entire engine on top of a well a graphics API that you may not think is as um, I mean as the Robust. name would imply web GPU uh, it's it is it back glide <laughs> it's not glide Damn it. but uh it, it's web gpu and not to be confused with the old web gl uh web gpu is going to be the base for uh the mock engine the future of graphics with zig and yes 
it is basically they have a very good breakdown of just what kind of support you can expect with the different manufacturers and the different platforms. And just about everyone supports web GPU because it is it was built completely abstracted from the platforms themselves, so of course they work. Uh while Bitch, are you trying to do your traditional run this ones? JavaScript? Nope. Nope. Oh, okay. not entirely. Okay. Right. <laughs> the implementation allows for that, but you can absolutely use this as a graphics API, like the old traditional ones, like DirectX, OpenGL, Vulkan Metal, what have you. It is very much along those lines, and they they expose the problem because you had Apple in the past that supported OpenCL and OpenGL. Now they don't. Now it's all metal all the time. That's it. That's all you get. So this as a multi-platform initiative to create an engine entirely from uh, scratch to support web GPU as an API, it, it's a very good idea. It, But y- what's important for game developers, th- assuming the engine's going the to be triangle. used for games, no. yeah, <laughs> you gotta have the triangle render. You, you gotta. But game developers, if you look at the Unity ghetto on Steam... It's all about making that quick buck and not so much about anything else. So this is very good for us I, nerds. You know what, we I'm very not, much I'm not appreciate it. Say that the entirety of the Unity Ghetto, because there's a non insignificant percentage of the Unity Ghetto that is. This is my first game, and I had a spare hundred dollars. Yes, <laughs> yes. There, there are the genuine. It's like I, I don't know what I'm doing. This was just my first experiment. Yes, absolutely. And I could just but buy there's it also get my game a lot. Game, yeah. A lot of games that were made as cash-ins and unashamedly so. Oh, of course. Have you you looked at, like, the Play Store? (laughs) Have have, have you looked at any (laughs) EA title recently? Um, Not FIFA. Yeah, but... (laughs) Right? (laughs) But, yeah, like, uh, so this guy goes into his argument uh, about using uh, WebGP over Vulkan, and there's definitely some merits to the argument. It's uh, definitely a certainly a persuasive argument. Um, it kind of reminds me a bit of using UFS as a cross-platform file system. And like Pedro said, the woman its name does sort of belay its true potential as the cross-platform graphics target. Because, you know, when you want, when you're dealing with browsers, you want as abstract as possible so that your browser code can just do whatever it needs to do. Um, so a lot of work to do right now. We just have a triangle and I really think that like network effect is going to be the thing that kills it. Because if you, if you argue this purely from a technical standpoint, I think there's definitely compelling points, but mm-hmm. there's right now a lot of tribal knowledge, knowledge about, uh, Vulcan, uh, even more so about direct X. And that's so much so that valve is like just trying to capitalize on that with the DXVK. Hey, you don't need to learn a new thing to support Linux. We got you. Um, until we see something like Unreal or Unity or a larger engine target something like that, I think it's going to remain like a cool technical curiosity, merits aside. But this guy apparently has some chops. He has He's written a game engine in Go before, and he has some experience writing dev tooling. I don't know if that actually translates to give him a year and we'll actually have something useful. But, you know, it's like it's definitely something to investigate. Hey, man, um, if you happen to be like reverse creep it and you're listening to us, we'd love to have you on the show. And yep. like, explain to our dumbasses. <laughs> yes. God, we we want more uh, info on this because yes, it is very interesting for us nerds. It's amazing. It's, it's going to be a bit of uh, an uphill battle to convince game developers and publishers that this is a good idea. Listen, man, what I, we, I want to write DirectX and only DirectX we because need that's what I was taught. Visual Zig with Zig blocks. <laughs> yes. We'll call them Zags. I have uh, visual, uh, yeah, visual Studio codes for me and it writes DirectX code, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, VK D3D Proton speaking, Update hotness. Speaking of Visual Studio, you know, if you don't want to actually learn any of that low-level graphics <laughs> programming, you can just write your game in Visual Studio and VK D3D will do it for you. Version 2.5 is out. Pew Pew Rays are now implemented for both NVIDIA and AMD. They got the NVIDIA ones and the uh, Kronos extensions put in place. Uh, they are soliciting a bunch of feedback, though. They say controls fine, death loops fine, cyberpunk, duh, cyberpunk is cyberpunk. Um, <laughs> Met- Metro Enhanced Edition that supposedly works. Well, you, you can check that out. Yeah, I, I meant to go check that out myself, but uh, then I was like, I don't feel like downloading 70 gigs of this thing. Yep. Um, mm. 
The, the other thing that got the other two big things that got added in this release DLSS support. So you can get that high resolution goodness and resizable bar support. They're saying that uh, it'll get you maybe a 10 to 15 percent boost in some games. Uh, if you don't have it enabled in the BIOS, you'll only get about 256 megabytes of resizable bar. But that's still enough to improve performance enabled on in the BIOS? some games. Yeah, you need to you need to turn it on as a uh, as a feature. Yes. Um, you need to specifically not, enable it in the UEFI for the software to be able to see it. Yeah. See, I was asking yeah. about that last week. No one told me that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I, no, no, no one knew until we did the research. I'm, I'm still mad because apparently my hardware has full support for a sizable bar, but NVIDIA, those fuckers only support it for the 5,900, 5,000. Yeah, no yeah. it's only for the 5,000 series. So if you have a 30, uh, 3,000 series like myself or Jordan, you don't. So yeah, I want that 5900X. I want some resizable bar. I want some rebar. So you got to have like the five. <laughs> are, are you trying to like, dare implying that my X399 chipset will not support that? Yes, your first gen Ryzen will not support, <laughs> <laughs> support that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's talk well, about Julius. Yeah, let's, let's have is. some nice, tasty, blended orange drink. No, this is uh, Julius, um, Caesar 3. Uh, it's a strategy game. You play as Caesar before he got his back stabbed by his best buddy. Not in the fun way. Uh, but yeah, they uh, they have some uh, fixes for the latest version. This is 1.7.0. The big one here for Linux is um, that... Uh, there's SDL two on Wayland support now. So, you know, good, good news for the steam deck. Also, they did all, they did add support for uh joystick on handhelds and they added lifts for the switch and Vita, which also bodes well for the deck. If maybe you want to play some Julius or Caesar three on, um, on your steam deck. I don't know. And like, uh, Andy very, very accurately brought up in the, um, in discord, it supports haiku now. So Ooh. if you happen to have yourself a PC or a VM running Haiku, there's something for you to test. Pedro, I'm a little and disappointed in you, man, because uh, I had no point, unless I missed it, I didn't see a screenshot of this running on that laptop of yours. <laughs> <laughs> and let's Admittedly, be, honest, I didn't be honest, young man, that would be far <laughs> from the strangest thing I've seen on that laptop. <laughs> yes, I have run uh, PPSSPP on uh, Haiku. I think it was um, the PSP release of uh, Mos- uh, Monster Hunter something. You're kidding. But yeah, the Julius is pretty good. And even on Haiku, where you don't have any hardware acceleration for the graphics yet, this will probably work great because, yes, it is just Caesar 3 with a better UI. So, yeah. And, you know, SDL 2, <laughs> so it'll run on modern yep. systems. Right. <laughs> That's, that's, neat, that's the man. big one here. Yeah, well, that's one of the cool things about just having source available to things, even no matter how you go about doing it. Um, outside of robbery, um, we're going to be able to play this in the future, and you can expose kids to how bad games used to be. Yeah, Caesar 3 was one of the best ones. <laughs> like, the old of the old city builder-focused games, that was one of the best ones. Here, Timmy, but, this, this was but, known as the good time. But do you cancer. have Godzilla? Can you have can you have UFOs show up and nuke Rome? You can That's if you want to, baby. <laughs> so check this out. I finally broke down and picked up a YouTuber special. What's that? That is a focus right audio interface because if you watch a YouTube video from a person on the YouTube saying, Hey, what what should you buy? Get the check from uh focus right, but in the pocket. Right, well, you 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 would say they're focus wrong? No. I would say they'd recommend a focus right, particularly a solo, like a gen three. This is the new one. I had to pick it up. And now, typically, we talk about audio interfaces and stuff like that. I'm more interested in um, FireWire interfaces because they're better than USB audio interfaces. And audio, USB is a dog shit protocol for an audio interface. Sorry, everyone. Um, even Pedro agrees with it at this point. To be fair, this uh, FireWire <laughs> interface that I'm using right now, pretty good. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. <laughs> it's all right, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah. How, how how are the X runs? Um, what X runs? <laughs> it's almost like that same protocol to use for uh, audio. It's kind of like why Mac yeah. chose it. Um, anyway, back to the point at hand. I just ran this through the ringer, man, because I wanted people to just be like, "Hey, does this work under Linux?" 
And turns out, yes, it does. It is a class compliant USB interface. So you plug it in, you receive vape, just bacon, man. It's there. Welcome to Linux in USB class comp compliant audio interfaces. Also support. It's in the kernel. You just plug it in again. That's it. Now, I do walk through uh, getting this, you know, just set up with like OBS and what it's going to look like with Pulse Audio, how it works with Jack, because let's be honest, uh, here's some round trip latency. All the USB audio interfaces are roughly going to be around the same. Now, admittedly, this goes for FireWire as well. Once you've done one, you've kind of seen them all. What you're looking for is something, not being crazy, like this old PCIe interface. Now, what's round trip latency? Jordan, can you explain that to the lovely people? The latency of when it's being sent to when it's being monitored? Pretty close. Now, um, this is the way you benchmark an audio interface. You know, it is how long it takes the audio signal to enter the input of the device and get processed then go out the back. So th this is how you get numbers. This is how you put your digits on the board. This is how you benchmark things. Now, at 48K, at a buffer size of 128, the focus rate is doing 14.33 milliseconds, which is just outside usable, just outside usable. Cause after you can force yourself, you can get used to 11 milliseconds if you're doing live monitoring, but you gotta like work your, you gotta ease your way into it. You gotta get a little loop. It's, and, like, it's like gravity training. You gotta you know, well, slowly shoot yourself like, with larger um, caliber bullets. Your brain will take care of, um, if you're watching something with the audio, just a little bit out of sync. But if you watch it for a while, like your brain takes care of that for you and you're like, okay, and deal mm -hmm. with this. Anything over about 11, and once you start getting like 12, 12 milliseconds, you just can't deal with it because that starts walking into that where it's delayed just enough to start tripping you up and your brain just can't deal with that. Now, uh, something like this uh, 2003 Army 9632, at 128, at 48K, the round trip latency on that is 0 0.9 something. So... There's your difference right there. But what I want to say at the end of the day, if you want to pick one of these up, go for it. Um, they make their glorified sound cards. You know, I'll probably end up getting the Motu version of this, which is the M2, just to show people. At this price point, um, just pick the one that you want. I mean, there's no point in fighting about this. The All the preamps, they don't have character to them. They're super clean, a decent amount of gain, and um, very easy to use. Really nothing to play around with. All you have to do is figure out how to get rid of the X runs on your system. And Can't use kernel 514? You can. Now, one might think that's a good idea, but maybe not, especially if you have some MIDI devices laying around. Uh, it's still kind of dodgy with that. And the mm. person um, who does audio stuff on Linux, like hit me up in the comments of uh, this particular YouTube video. It's like, how do you do this? Which I'm, I'm just going to say, if you want to go watch that video, read the comments, and there's a link that links to the link of how to um, set link. up some of your hardware. The same way we have it set up in the studio that with big red text on it, because you can nuke your box by playing around with that, but at least it's up, and that's the thing. That's the story. There you go. That is the YouTuber special on Linux, so if you want to start streaming or anything like that, uh, it'll get you done. All right. Good stuff. Well, we got to get on YouTube and stream some Aeon Drive. I don't know. We're throwing chairs at it for sure. That's what's happening. Welcome back to the Chairquisition. This week, we're taking a look at Aeon Drive, built by Two Awesome Studio on the Unity Engine. You can pick it up for about 15 bucks. What is it? Rush through the cyberpunk landscapes of Neo Barcelona or Barcelona in an Aeon Drive, an action platformer with a speed running twist. Whether solo or up to four player co op, sprint and dash through many areas of a neon infused city and use your time and space bending powers to get ahead. So, this is the chairquisition. This is where we take a game, we rate it on a very accurate scale of one to four chairs, Correct. lawn chairs, of course, not recliners, not lazy boys, anything like that. No, those. Crappy lawn chairs you get at Canadian Tire. Um, we tested on a bunch of different systems with a bunch of different hardware. So let's get into it. Ven, you are our uh, happy boy this week. So uh, I'm so it. excited, you guys. Uh, yeah, so I ran it over here on Debian 11 on my little 1920X Red Boober through 2 gigs of RAM. And you know what? 
I spent my time playing it at 1080p, so you might have guessed I, I did have an issue running it on the 2060. Now, that said, it will sometimes develop a case of the joggers uh, for fuck and all reason. Uh, just to restart, goes away. Now, uh, out of the box, my Xbox One X controller, it detected it, no problem. And it had that bonus soda of even after you start the game, you can cut the wireless controller on and the damn thing connects. I like seeing that more and more in this crazy future that we're living in. Nice little soundtrack on it. Really liked it, and it's completely, like, A-OK. -okay. Well done, hipster pixel graphics. So, yeah, that's it for the launch looks, sounds, and controls, but let's talk about the fun, kids. Because, ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is a speedrunning sampler pack. Bite size. So, admittedly, I was kind of mad on it until, you know, Ultimore and Strider started posting scores in our Discord. I had a fun time driving down times. This week in Discord, basically you're just running around, you're jumping, you're teleporting, you're dying a lot, and uh, you can go for like completing the levels or take a stab and see how quickly you can go through a level. There's two ways of doing it. There's several routes. Each level, every path requires like a level of precision, but there's some levels of just precisions and bullshittery that is beyond me, which I, I, I can respect. I can respect. Uh, my initial playthrough, the developer showed up during my live stream, kind of dropped some pro tips uh, that kind of should have been in the tutorial, but I think this recent update that just came out, that's in the tutorial now, so you're welcome on that. Now, if you want to try your hand at speedrunning, I'm going to say give this a look, because I, I enjoyed it. You know, I'm kind of passive with speedrunning. I like watching it. I, not something I want to get into. It's too big of a commitment. But this little 30-second chunks, absolutely. You know, the only thing holding this back from me telling you is just run out, pick it up, and play it for the fuck all of it is the lack of online co-op or PvP, because remote play doesn't cut it, even under the best conditions. And you know what? Getting a group of frenemies around, getting over to play, it's not as simple as it used to be. Well, you know, because of reasons. But I gotta say, you know, even at uh, $14.99, if you want to play against the internet, go for it. If you got some friends, it's a good time to be had. I'm going to say check it out. With time to spare, Pedro. <laughs> hey man i wasn't the one who brought Speed it up running the chair position man that's how you do <laughs> but yeah over here on the horizon 7 3700x with the gtx 1080 it launches out of the box it holds 144 at 2560 by 1440 the dual shock 4 worked out of the box with the correct prompts and no steam input required very nice the graphics are your fairly standard 16 bit ish era hipster pixels the soundtrack is pretty bumping i actually found myself head bobbing for a few seconds until i died again but the soundtrack is very very nice but is it fun well no n not for me i don't don't get me wrong i don't mind the uh if you at at first you don't succeed die 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 again i i, I like dark souls after all Take a shot. Uh, what puts me off is it, it's another action hipster pixel platformer with the added stress of making it through the levels in as perfect a way as you possibly can. You have 30 seconds, maybe a bit more if you collect a thon all the time capsules to enjoy the level. Uh, and then it's either start back from the beginning or quit back to the main menu. I don't like speed running. I like to take my time with video games and Aeon Drive, the core mechanic is antithetical to my enjoyment of it. But this is a personal thing. Um, though, you know, making it a hipster pixel platformer didn't really help me much either. Uh, it's not a bad game at all. I just don't like it. And Ven brought up Distance earlier. Uh, Distance was a racing game and the tracks took about a minute and a half, two minutes to beat. That's good. 30 seconds, too little. He's fetus. That's, um, yeah. Uh, that's uh, two chairs for me. All right. I'm 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 not happy boy this week. So on Fedora 64-bit uh, with the R9 3900X, no resizable bar, and the 1080 Ti, uh, it holds uh, 68 UHD, as most 2D games should on the 1080 Ti. Um, very slim in the options, though. You have a windowed mode, uh, you got some resolution options, and that's kind of it. Um... DualShock works out of the box with Steam input, wrong glyphs, and hey, it's voice acted. They do a decent job, but you know, after that tutorial, I don't want to hear from them ever again. Yeah, so fun, fun wise, here's here's the thing. I, I I am on the record as not being a fan of precision platformers, so I'm just gonna say, making me sit through all the squeaky voice dialogue at the start of the level in the tutorial, and then if I fuck up, making me listen to the same unskippable cutscene again. 
very easy way to make me hate your game. Uh, start me at the level. Don't punish me any more than necessary, please. Uh, I'm glad that, that stops once the tutorial ends and you get into the game proper, but that didn't give you much in the way of points. Uh, making me do precision pl forming in a very tight time window is the second fastest way to make me hate your game. Ha! It's not looking too uh, good for Aeon Drive there, uh, is it? I think, yeah, definitely if you're into speedrunning or precision platformers of this ilk, I think it's definitely worth a look. Like like I was mentioned before, the soundtrack is very good. The animation is good. Uh, the sprite art is very good. Everything is distinct. There's no character blindness, et cetera, et cetera. The controls are reasonably responsive. Um, although I will say uh, some some of those windows are a little bullshit. Uh, I'm not a fan. Um, yeah, it's just not for me. I don't like having, I, I don't like being put to a clock and this game is all about that. So fundamentally we are at an impasse. I'm gonna give it one share, but that's not a don't look at it. That is a, I don't like this game. And if you are like me, you may not like it either. Logically, I've been sitting back. I think I've under, I, I think I know something that, because Pedro, what, what were your thoughts on Celeste and, uh, not Celeste, the other one, the star. I didn't Celeste. like them very much. No, not at all. I mean, they were good games. I could recognize that they were good games, but I didn't want to keep playing them. See, they're uh, not for audio listeners. It's the first time I'm watching Pedro play. Pedro likes collecting things. Yes, and that, that really <laughs> I like seems... to take my time and explore. <laughs> that seems and to this be hanging doesn't on let me pretty hard on this one. I'm like, ignore that, ignore that. What are you trying to get that for? You're losing half a second on that jump. Come on. <laughs> it, it's not my kind of game. It's really not. <laughs> I, I think like for me, it works. You know, I definitely said vend my way through a game, which I do with most games, right? Like side quests, whatever. Die. I'm just going to get the, when I get to the credits, I've won. I've defeated your game. Ha ha ha. And this, this, this rewards that play style. I mean, yeah, know. if if and if and if that's your Jimmy Jam, this game's probably gonna do it for you. But uh otherwise, maybe not. All right. Seems legit. Um uh, yeah. Yeah. Coming up next, Alan Pope gives us some suggestions for dealing with WordPress's new editor. Uh, <laughs> it's not new, baby. <laughs> it's not new. And as uh, Jordan furiously <laughs> types something into Google, wh which I uh, personally am uh, anticipating the answer very much too. Uh, it's, it's you, the VMU. VMU. Yeah. Virtual video memory. memory yes. Yeah. <laughs> or video. Okay. Blinky right. screen no, not movie virtual. thing. Yes. The buttons. <laughs> but yes. Uh, there we go. There's the answer. And if you'd like to uh, ask some weird questions of the three of us, or I don't know, ask some question to the universe, but you feel like you need a random website to type it into. Yeah. Linux Gamecast. It's called <laughs> There's no more you can go to the contact page. It's right up there on the nav bar. It's pretty easy to find. Just, yeah, pick LGC Weekly as your topic. Give us your name, your email, a subject, and your message. There you go. That, that's all you need to do. Whoa, if whoa, you're whoa, a game is, developer. Is, is that an email from VMware? Yes. <laughs> you know, if you're a game yes, developer and you'd like us to have a look or talk about your game, there's some caveats at the top. Those are aimed at you. There's some basic things, man. We do live <laughs> off of your feedback. So, um, hey, look at it this way. We don't want you to send in. We, we don't want you to give us money to give you a shout out on the show. So no super chats. Just send mm -hmm. a fucking email. And, uh, we do want yeah. you to give us money, though. Also, yes. Pa <laughs> Patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. If you would. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Not required to have your message read. Now, no. Vaughn uh, has a little thing that... Uh, it's about, ooh, 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 ooh. And this is a common problem about people who care what operating system you run. <gasps> Fun runs. I've had so many friends that look grossed out when I tell them I came on Linux. <gasps> have you, have you considered brushing your teeth? <laughs> it might be unrelated. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure it's the Linux bit that's grossing them out? <laughs> I don't know. See, okay, now here's the thing. If I had friends that were grossed out that I gamed on Linux, A, I'd fucking have a laptop. B, I'd be chasing those bitches around with my Linux yeah, games it, it, running. It's like that SpongeBob <laughs> meme, like, be, be gentle, face. you're scaring him. I'm um, installing a live CD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, stop uh, it, Patrick, no. you're scaring him. <laughs> I mean, Linux is perfectly fine. You shouldn't be grossed out. It's not like Haiku. 
<laughs> if you're gaming on Haiku, you have my utmost respect, actually. I'm pretty sure most that... Windows users still feel pretty gross about their operating system choice, though. Not really. They're still running Windows 7 because they got to get the gaming performance in, bro. <laughs> I mean, it's not far off, especially when you have Windows 11 coming out, just increasing the latency of uh, Ryzen processors uh, by... Sure. Fake news, Pedro. <laughs> they released the patch and they fixed that. <laughs> you mean the Breaking one that Breaking menu with ad updates, <laughs> yeah. The uh, one that, you know what? AMD, you dropped the ball on that. It's not like AMD was the one company that didn't fucking know Windows 11 was on the way, man. Yeah. And everyone's saying, oh, Wintel's a thing. Wintel's a thing. It's like, yeah, AMD software support, it's never been great. No. Maybe, maybe it's someone the Mesa project. Hey, maybe they, that task was handed to someone on the Radiant Group. So that would be understandable. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> ah, the old ATI people. <laughs> NDI, what's that, Jordan? Uh, it's the new tech display interface. Oh. It's, 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 it's that thing you uh, made a video about that uh, the new tech guys uh, put on their website. But right. Chain, Chain G Chang, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Uh, they're asking, uh, is it only support same platform? I want to use gaming PC is on Windows and streaming is on Linux. It does possible. I tried, but NDI source does not appear. I use Arch Linux. A, thank you for doing that. I don't believe my uh, brain would have survived um, getting all that the was a Google that. translate. Oh. <laughs> that was that was very much was a Google translate. So, <laughs> Sorry about that, Changey. Yeah. Chang. Uh, to Jordan's point, yeah. If you go visit the uh, NDI New Tech blog, you'll find um, a link to my guide of how to set that up on Linux. And yes, that's one of the beautiful things about NDI. We've used NDI in the studio before uh, to set up like this shot just out of curiosity and you know during the dark days when i bought a 500 hundred dollar capture card that black magic didn't tell me how to make work for almost an entire year um but oh it's completely cross you can use ndi from mac linux windows ios and android do you have to worry about uh too, too much of like the version mismatch is there like graceful not really because they, they typically only update ndi versions like once every fourth year Mm. and the new version of NDI is always backwards compatible. You might not have all right. the like super cool bits, and uh, but there's an SDK available. And if you're brave, which I've done it before, uh, NDI support used to be directly built into FFmpeg, but they got in a slap fight with each other. And I get both sides because I've seen other companies work with uh, like, New tech is not in the clear on this at all, but the FFmpeg crew was definitely going full FFmpeg crew on them on top of things, kind of complicating stuff. But you can still build um, NDI support into FFmpeg if you build FFmpeg. It's not that hard. I've done it on these two boxes. But yeah, you shouldn't run into a problem. Just set it up correctly. RTFM, it, it's not just for Linux anymore, maybe. Yeah. Well... I guess this next one, uh, both Ven and I have been incredibly vocal about our disdain for a particular WordPress update. That I, is I try to provide updates upon? bi-weekly. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> oh, man. And my latest I, one, I, you're going to get this one, but I, I want to like yeah. set the stage for this because th <laughs> this was purely um, anger at the Gutenberg editor in WordPress because... It bad? I fucking hate it. And um, I just tweeted. I, I forget it was something like, oh, yes, after three weeks of uh, regular usage, I can say with some level of certainty that Gutenberg is still an absolute dumpster fire. Oh, my God. I, I, I'm pretty sure we've upset the gods at WordPress or whatever. But you, Al, Alan Popey, um, you, you might remember him formerly of the Ubuntu podcast. Uh, he said he uh, fired back on Twitter. He's like, I warmed to it. I found the quote unquote best process was to craft content as Markdown formatted in an external editor and paste it in in one go. It would do the quote unquote right thing where it all went wrong was editing it in the Gutenberg editor, which you know, you know, uh, I I took that for uh, I took that for what it's worth. I said, you know what, Alan, you you might have a, you might have an idea there. So I go look up like, okay, is there a way to extract like uh, Open Office uh, formatted stuff to Markdown? Because I figure, you know, Open Office or LibreOffice, fairly popular piece of software. Markdown, pretty popular formatting 
framework. Uh, such a thing does not exist natively. Uh, and there's a bunch of random tools that involve uploading your files that I mm. really don't want to utilize. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, oh man. To, to the WordPress developers. I hate you. Why? Why just, did you do uh, this? And yeah, I understand. You're like, what's this got to do with Linux gaming? Nothing. We just wanted to fucking vent publicly about this. So, yeah. yeah. N- name and shame, baby. Name and shame. It, it's still bad. Don't, I mean, how about this? How about this? Um, would you be able to overlook fucking everything if it could do a one-to-one with color formatting from Google Docs? Absolutely. If I could just paste my shit in and be done with it, that would be amazing. But, but no. that's not the real world. <sighs> Unfortunately, uh, on that all too painful bombshell, we got to cue the music. Hey, everyone, thanks for showing up and hanging out with us for this little rock block of Linux nonsense. Unfortunately, uh, it has to come to an end. But hey, if you want to get in touch with me, I'm just at Vin Stone on Twitter. That's where I'm hanging out. Uh, I do things there and I post stuff. And if you want to get the behind the scenes, what we're up to the other six days of the week, if you're a Twitch sub or a Patreon, hop into our Discord. Or if you just want to hop into IRC, that's also a link to our live channel on Discord and Twitch through Chatbot, if you've been wondering what the f- that was. And uh, I'll talk to you there. And uh, let's see. Oh, Mastodon. Mast.linuxteamcast.com. Doing that thing. Just at Vin. I'm Jordan Spung, and fortunately, Twitter has not adopted the Gutenberg editor, although I suspect it will within the week. That's uh, how you so get you can... rid of toxicity, because nobody's going to power through that. <laughs> yeah. They really nope. mean it. Yeah, just no no one's going to use it. It's like making every bullet cost $5,000. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at The Burning Fool. Sometimes I stream at twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. I'm trying to do that this week again. Maybe I'll fail. Maybe I won't. Stay tuned. And I am Peter Mateus. You can find me on Twitter at unaccounted4, and that that's pretty much where you can find me on the interwebs outside of, you know, this show and LWDW. So, yeah, just check out our YouTube channel. That, Apparently you know, it's a thing now. We have the, two. Smacking the mic is <laughs> kind of like throwing, pouring one out for Strider, isn't it? No, see, that would require me assaulting, like, the business end of the microphone. <laughs> Just smacking it properly. I, 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 I mean, be, be nice, then, as in Unix nice. <laughs> Minus ah, 11 all the way. Let's thank all yeah. the beautiful party people who make yeah. this show possible. Starting out with our patrons, we got our advisors, the big, big Uh-oh. Omegas, and the also very ginormous Arthur. I'm talking about their slightly. Spirits. They're slightly mm. larger compatriots. Aldeus, Barb, Bramp, Scott, Michaud, Mr. Foxdog, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer, and Gohaku. Our little Nikki fans, Darkwing and Abstraction, and our sea monsters, Jack B, Renault the Page, Red Rex Machina, Frostball. Paul, Justin, and Justin. Yeah. Yes, and the Death Notes, Nova, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marson, System T, Craig, Renee, Leonardo, DeCresny, Kim, Smashly G, Chris, Stephen Jill, Benjamin, Doom 2.1, Stephen B, Dirty Dean, Back, Game Matron, and Dodger. Look at that. All that reading, man. Uh, Monica, Oil, Hope, 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 uh, well, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what it is. Thanks, Eshep, John, Noctis, Aldeus, Linux, Nuru, <laughs> Artharin, and Gameatron. We'll Bye. see you next week, Dynafire. Bye. <laughs> Unless we want to make, like, uh... <laughs> yeah, that's Crush face. me under a Grutenberg. Crush me under a Grutenberg, Grutenberg press daddy. Greg Grutenberg. Greg Grutenberg and J.J. Abrams. I am Grutenberg. Don't get my ideas. Five dudes.